Hi folks, sorry I can't go live, I don't know what's going on with YouTube at the moment, um, but I can get this recording done so hopefully you can see this um, a bit later on our channel. So I have all the pieces cut out here on the table and um, I'm just going to go through step by step the instructions and do the sew, sew along on my own <laughs> and hopefully you'll be able to follow this through and um, it'll be a full video instead of uh, YouTube cutting my videos on my channel as well. So apologies for all the technical issues and um, hopefully we will get this done. So what we need to do, we have um, our templates. I've cut all my fabric out and I have my template lining C cut out ready here. We need one template B and I've gone for the tiger fabric here and then we need three of the template A which is the one lining and the two main fabrics which I have here and here. So the first instruction is to get, let's have a look, place main fabric A right side up, fold your ribbon in half and place the ends over the top edge so that they overhang by one centimetre where you place the ribbon loop is up to you. So I'm going to go for this one here got my ribbon loop and we need to make sure it overhangs so we're going to place that over here and it overhangs slightly and then we need to get our fabric B make sure that they're right sides together and with the tiger we want to make sure the tiger's facing the right way up so looking at the table here I'm going to be flipping that over and both of the tigers are facing the right way. Just going to clip that in place. Let's make sure that ribbon is completely lined up. I don't want it wonky. Move those away. So we're just going to sew along that top edge there. And it's a one quarter seam allowance. Back stitch. Okay, just trim those edges. So we now have these joined together with our little loop, okay? So that will be the back panel and this will be folded over this way for the front panel. And I believe we now call this piece D, okay? So now we're gonna get the remaining main fabric and lining fabric A. So that's these two pieces. Place them right sides together and we're going to be sewing the two short edges together. So I'm going to be sewing down here on these two. and again, secure your stitches. Okay, so we've now trim our excess edges. I'm just turning my iron on. So the next stage we're going to be pressing this. Okay, 
the clips off. I'm going to turn that the right way round. And we're going to give this a nice press now. Right, so what stage have we got to now? So this one is now called E. Now we're going on to the lining fabric. Oh, I didn't think I pressed that. Look at that. Look at that wonky line at the bottom. I didn't pull out the fabric enough. Let's quickly press that again. me rushing things because the live hasn't worked I keep having technical issues this week Okay, so now let's put that heat mat away. We're going to get our lining fabric and we're going to get the fabric that we did in stage one that we said we'd call D. Okay. I might just press those apart as well in a second. Just using my fingers at the moment just pressing that open so using the lining fabric C along with the main fabric that we joined in stage one called D place the fabrics right side together and sew along the bottom edge so we're going to put them together like this and we're going to sew along the bottom edge okay so that's bottom edge across here A stitch right so the next stage open out the fabric the right way facing up go so let's get that so you can see it on your screen there we go and the next stage um, open the fabric weight ray out place fabric E along the seam join on top of the lining fabric and pin in place so we're gonna get this one we're going to place it on the lining fabric and we're going to pin that into place. So that's at my seam join. But what I'm going to quickly do is just hold that in place and check that I've got that the right way around because that's my flap and I haven't. My tigers are upside down. So make sure you get your placement right. So I'm going to unfold that and I'm going to turn that round. 
so it's facing the right way that I need. Let's just change this a minute. There we go. Oops. I'll be breaking my technology now. Okay, you can see a bit better now. So I'm going to place that on there and pin that in place. So the next stage, fold the main fabric with the loop on top of fabric E. So that's fabric E, fold that across and carefully pin in place. So I'm just going to take that pin out that I had before and pin through all the fabrics and do the same on this one. Okay, so the next bit. Fold the main fabric, loop fabric E, carefully play, uh, pin in place, which we've done. So that's image 13. Find the center of the fabric along the sewn edge. Okay, so this is the sewn edge down here. Find the center and measure out a four centimeter gap from the center. Okay. Get my pen. So that's the centre. I'm just going to mark it actually on the uh, bit of raw fabric down here. That's four and a half either side and we need four centimeters so that's going to be one where am I one two to there and one two to there so that's four centimeters then measure one and a half centimeters up from both sides And that is again from the sewn edge. There we go. So, freehand draw the perimeters of your bottle, add in the curved lines from the one and a half, uh, 1.2, sorry, centimetre mark to the four centimetre gap. At the top left edge, leave a three centimetre gap to turn your fabric through. So I'm just going to do a three centimetre gap over here now, just so I know, and add that on. One. There we go. And now we just need to do that curvature. So my line comes in here. I'm going to curve that round. Line comes in there, again, going to curve that round. So I've got my two curved lines drawn on there, just show you up close. And now I'm going to just have a straight line or curvy bit there. And go straight up to my line there where I'm going to stop my gap. And I'm going to curve across the top here. And you want to get as close to the edge as you can. So you can see on my one here, I have got my gap here. Got it drawn all the way around there and there. So the next stage is going to be sewing along all those edges. Okay.
just going to secure my stitch and do the awkward curved bit first. So just taking it nice and slowly, lifting up my press of foot with my needle in the machine just to get that curve. go around this corner It's done. Let me just trim the bits around here. And trim the threads. So this is the bit that you start trimming. Um, you can see on here, I need to trim this bit round here, that bit round there, and then any excess um, fabric on my long stretch here, do the corners at the top. And then I'm not going to trim too much on this side here, because that's where my gap is, and we need to close that gap with a top stitch. Um, so it'd be nice to have that to be able to fold through. I will trim this bit down here though. So my next stage now is going to be a bit, takes a bit long to do. I'm going to turn my fabric inside out through that gap. I love this bit. This is a bit that's a bit nervous when you're making things. I don't know if you guys feel nervous about this. But it's that moment of whether it's actually worked or not. I'm going by my day to day with technology or my week, should I say. I've had really had one of those weeks. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at all if this didn't work to the way that I would like it to. We'll soon see. Just 
push those corners through. Okay. Oh, it has a caught a little bit on there I need to do. But otherwise, it has actually been okay. Oh. So the next bit we're going to do is make sure all of our corners are out and we're going to press this flat. Okay. So I'll get my iron on. Such lovely fabric, really do love this fabric. Okay, so when you're pressing the top part of your flap that comes over here, obviously you've got your opening there, so fold the fabrics in. and then press in place and that will help us with our top stitch in a minute. There we go. Make sure all the corners are through on here. What nice clean corners through. Right, the next thing we're going to do now is the top stitch to close that gap shut and you're going to go all the way around here adding a top stitch and you could do a fancy stitch if you wanted to at this stage i'm just going to do or well, i might actually do a fancy stitch i'm going to look at my machine here what do i fancy um Tigers, let's see if there's like a leafy type one. There is, so I'm gonna go for right. Let's give this a go and see if it works. I should have probably gone for a plain stitch and set myself up to more aggro. Here we go.
okay I'm going to stop there I think I might also have to do a top stitch going around well as you can see that's a really lovely stitch on there it's not gone right to the edge so I'm just going to very quickly move my needle right to the edge as far as it can go and run that round very quickly Okay, so I'm just going to trim all the excess threads now and we need our iron on again. So that's looking really lovely now so what we're going to do is press that down like this and then it'll be ready to add the bottle in again and then place that over and really press this down because this will enable the top flat to close nicely so I haven't added a button on this as umming and ahhing do we add a button there if you want to you can do but I decided uh, against it So let's get, obviously this is one I did for uh, the box prototype. We're going to get our carabiner and carabiner is going to go into our loop. And we're going to get our bottle. And that should fit in nicely through there. There we go. So we've got one really funky hand sanitizer cover bottle. Uh, apologies again for this not being a so long live, but I hope you've enjoyed.